So we have three motors and control box all working flawlessly. We can put these onto our vehicles without concern as to they're not going to work for us later. Okay. Okay. Yes. Step one. Let's bring our frames and put them in front of us. Okay. And it works best if you put the back of the vehicle facing you forward like that. Perfect. All right. Now our orange motor is our vertical thruster. Okay. Our blue one, B-L-U-E, four letters, goes on the L-E-F-T side of the vehicle. Also called port. the port, P-O-R-T, <laughs> all even. The green is our starboard, which is odd. Otherwise right, which is also odd. Odd. Okay. Now to mount these, we're using these zip ties. Okay. Now the zip ties roll around and into each other. And it's important to keep the textured side of the zip tie inside the of the loop. Okay? Okay. So we're going to put the loop through, in your case, the bottom two set of holes. Because you put the turning adjustment hole at the top. Mm -hmm. Like we said, you can put it top or bottom as long as it was consistent. Okay. In your case, you have your adjustment screw or adjustment hole the at bottom. the bottom. Now the way we make those adjustments is we put the screwdriver through that hole and now we can turn that to adjust the angles yeah. that so the motors are on. Didn't matter which way it went. We that's right. Together. So we can move it now. So if you want to, you can adjust those now. You're going to put your zip ties around and zip tie your motors to the frames. All the time going in from the back of the vehicle and then to where the motors are going to go so that your tether will always come out the back of the vehicle. Okay. Okay. Now, does it matter if the motors are on the inside or the outside? It really doesn't. Okay. There are, there are schools of thought on here, and this is probably the most contentious issue among mm -hmm. Perch builders. Do you want the motors on the inside or do you want them on the outside? We've had long philosophical debates on this. I like my motors on the outside. It makes the vehicle more maneuverable. A lot of people put them on the inside because it's more protected. Mm -hmm. So the props are less likely to hit other things, but they're not as zippy. Okay. So make it a personal decision of your own and then go ahead and mount your motors where you would like them. So this is where the motor will mount? The motor will mount where the loop ends up right. being. And the, this is the back. This is the back of the so vehicle. The propeller's on the side. And you want the propeller on the back side of the vehicle. Okay. All right, so you'll go ahead and do that and snug up. Now sometimes before you put the motor in, get your zip tie started. So that way when you have mm -hmm. one hand on your motor, all you Lies need to do it. is grab that end and give it a nice tug. Can I use the screwdriver, please? Yes, you may. Thank you. I'm going to go with outside. <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and now mount all three of your motors. Uh, use that yes. Thank you. The vertical motor you're going to want on the aft side of that crossbar so it's in the best balancing point for the vehicle. Okay. okay and again, it. you want the propeller facing up which will give you the most downward thrust with it, allowing you to keep the vehicle so that it floats and you're pushing it down. Do they have to be lined up exactly They the don't same? have to be, but, but it a looks lot a lot better when they do. And does it drive a lot better also? Not noticeably. You know, a quarter hmm. inch here and there, you're not going to notice it. Um, but the fashion police will definitely uh, get after fashion you. Fashion police. Now, I believe, Fiona, we, we mentioned the part where we're going to want to bring the motors in from the back of the vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. And then into position. And you know what happens if you don't do that? <laughs> what you have is your tether out the side of the vehicle. Ah, uh, yes. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, 
there are a few ways to solve this. I can still pull my through. Okay. Uh, if this was loose enough, which it is, we can pop the motor out and just shift it around. Okay. Okay. The other thing is, this is a PVC pipe frame. And we didn't glue it. And we didn't glue it. So we can just simply take it apart, put the wires where we want them, and reassemble the frame. It is really hard to do something that's not reversible with the C-perch frame, especially when it's not glued. Excellent. Okay. Another great reason. And thank you for demonstrating that for us. I'm we always there for that. you guys. Screwdriver, please. Yep. Screwdriver. So like this, so it's facing up, right? Like that. Mounts like this. Correct. And the wires are in the oh, yep. appropriate place. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Now that you have all of those with their first zip tie, you're going to want to go through and snug up each of those zip ties before we go ahead and add the second zip tie to the assembly. Okay. And a a good process for tightening these, and yours being on the outside, will be very easy to do. All right, is you can pull it down and then lift it up, and it will ratchet just a little bit. Okay. So you can do that just one or two times, and you'll see you get nice and snug. You don't want to crush anything, but just a little bit of wiggle on that will make sure that you have a nice firm grab on those motors, and they're not going to go shooting off into space when you go fire this thing up. Good. All right, now you may notice that these motors have a little bit of wiggle to them when we mount them like this. Yes. All right, so, but we can fix that. Okay, so these are nice and snug already. So, yep, snug, snugging these ain't going to fix it. Still wiggling. But hey, look at this. With just more. one, one more zip tie, what we do is we take it and we go around nothing but the zip tie. The only thing inside the loop of this new zip tie is the old zip tie. And by doing that, it makes a little bit of a base that now holds those motors holds a little firmer. And it doesn't matter which way it goes. It doesn't matter which way it goes, and it doesn't have to be super tight. In fact, you don't want it to be super tight because you don't want it to hop underneath the motor. Right. So just go ahead and make those hand tight. And once you have those in place, you can go through and snip off. Now, you, before you start that, make sure you do not have the cable inside of that zip tie. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, if you get it in, is it a problem? No, as long as you make sure you're not pinching it to cut it. But it's better if you're not running that risk. A friend of mine once told me there is no wrong way to build a sea perch. And right after he said that, a, um, a young adult came up to him and said, well, how about this? And he said, now I've been corrected. <laughs> but there really is a lot of ways to configure your sea perch um, to make it your own. This is a configuration, a way to put it together. You can always change it around to see how it works differently. Uh, you know, put your motors on the outside and the inside. Put that thruster on the front, on the back. 
change the height or lengths of different parts. It's all different ways to build the same vehicle. And all of those ways make them slightly different, some cases better, in some cases maybe less better. Less better. All right, so now go ahead and either grab the scissors or the wire snips and cut off all your loose tails. So, we now have sea perches with motors, with floats, with nets, with tethers. The last thing we have to do is secure our tether to the vehicle and we are ready to go into the water.